We are now live, my friend. Yes, sir. Nice. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome back. So, Raven, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, we, we lost connection on that last one. My kid came over and turned off my computer. So that's about enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why kids usually are not allowed in the office. She's getting uh, paid by Kenny G. <laughs> my kid's not a show, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, any chance we got? Hey, uh, Stefan, how you doing? Is that how you pronounce your name, sir? Am I saying it correctly? This is Marcel. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Yes, sir. Yeah, hello. Uh, thanks for your invitation. Absolutely. Thanks for coming by. Uh, as a matter of fact, Stefan, mm -hmm. it, it's come to my attention from a recent uh, post that Citadel did on, on Clubhouse mm -hmm. that you could possibly be invested with Citadel Securities. Is that would that be a safe assumption, or would you feel, uh, you know, would you be able to to talk about that a little bit with us? Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm okay. actually I'm from Germany, and uh, it's nice to meet you. Today I, yeah. Um, actually, I'm not directly invested in Citadel, but through okay. a financial service provider from London mm -hmm. um, and already for 10 years uh, but um, yeah I, I got a little bit concerned um, especially what mm -hmm. I what I heard in news recently uh, I don't know um, are you from the US or yes sir uh, I'm you? from Chicago Illinois USA and uh oh, you know we okay. have people here from in this discord right now from all over the world as well you know we've got german apes you know french you know south american you know european there's all sorts of different people invested in these companies and that's kind of how we've all come to come to know each other you know and come together as a community because of uh the situation that we were seeing that was that's occurring in the united states stock market uh, we are all aware that it's, you know, a bit of a rigged game, but unfortunately we've come to the realization that it's a, a lot more serious than any of us, uh, originally thought, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. to elaborate on that a little bit more, I would say that, uh, I appreciate you coming and, and talking to us about this right now. Uh, you know, but there are, there are ver various different situations that are happening here uh, in the states that uh, are serious cause for concern. For example, uh, on September 28th, uh, Janet Yellen testified in front of Congress uh, for the CARES Act, which is a, an American uh, act. Let's, we don't have to get into the details, but basically she said, basically quote, that uh, over leverage by hedge funds such as I'm sorry, let me start over. So there are concerns that leverage by hedge funds will cause financial runs. And if you look up the definition of financial runs, uh, it's quite clear that a financial run is a run, which is a series of consecutive price increases or decreases in a given security. There is no set period of days that classifies a run, but conventionally most traders consider three or more consecutive price increases a run. And we have seen two massive consecutive price increases for both GameStop and AMC, as well as other what the media likes to call meme stocks, you know, which we know are heavily shorted stocks that uh, that are being abused by these market makers and hedge funds because they thought that they could short them into oblivion. And that's not not been the case, you know. Uh, at the same time, these banks are using things such as the American uh, Federal Reserve's uh, reverse repurchase program, in which uh, gives an overnight holding of companies in exchange for treasury securities. 
which are basically like bonds, you know, one night bonds on the American market. One day they do the purchase, the repurchase, and the next day they do the reverse repurchase in which they take money one day from these, uh, from these banks and prime brokers, give them the treasury securities, and then buy it back at 0.05% interest the following day. So that is one way in which they maintain short-term security without having to worry about the three month to 10 year or 30 year bond market collapsing their collateral values. Uh, that being said, the reason that they're doing things uh, such as abusing these bonds, uh, they're abusing the holdings of these Chinese commercial bonds for margin collateral to finance other hedge activities. And part of those hedge activities are reducing their losses, if at all possible, uh, on companies like AMC and GameStop. Uh, so that's why um, if you're, I'm not sure if, if you're aware, sir, or you know, as to if, if you if you saw what happened in the in the stock market in the United States in, in both January and June for these stocks, but uh, GameStop and AMC, among others, you know, increased uh, between a thousand and fifteen hundred percent. So yeah. they're yeah, they're both you know currently trading up many hundreds of percents or even thousands of percents of where they were a year ago, uh, and that's due one to their fundamental company, you know, their fundamentals becoming better as in you know uh gamestop has no debt and amc amc has uh been purchasing movie theaters with recently acquired assets uh so they are both definitely increasing their their revenue and their 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 profits while decreasing their losses uh to, to better their earnings per share uh aside from that then you've got hundreds of people as you can see like in this discord server right now and we've currently got several hundred people on youtube listening to this conversation uh we are we are all invested as are millions of others in these positions because one we love the stocks we love these companies and two the manipulation is so clear from these uh these hedge funds and whatnot that uh it, it's kind of sickening you know it, it's quite sickening to to the average investor and that's kind of why you know we've all gathered together to do our due diligence separately and, and together to learn more about the situations, sorry about that. Let me close that out. I'm trying to get out of there. Uh, the situations that are, are occurring uh, on our stock market, and it's what we call, what I like to call at this point, an inevitability, uh, because we've been warned by the Federal Reserve, by the United States Treasury, about the situations that are happening, and then we've actually gone in and pulled up these is the contracts to see the amount of uh, positions that are being held against these funds. Uh, and uh, in addition, there's many, many instances of what we call, you know, of what Bloomberg and other companies like to call glitches. Uh, but it's uh, when they're happening like almost every day, for example, or once a week, once a month, it's it stops being a glitch and it stops being a coincidence and, and it starts to be more of a repeating pattern, right? Uh, so let me show you one instance, if I can get to it here. Uh, for example, these here, uh, if you can see my screen, if you can't see my screen, uh, you could just click my name where it says boss, and then you can I click watch it. stream. Okay, great. This is, for example, GameStop. And this is a uh, a picture that's a a few months, a couple months old at this point, but I've got to get some updated ones for you as well. But this is this is very interesting information because you can see the number of thousands of put options, and each one of these puts is representative of a short position, and eighty thousand seven hundred and two needs to be multiplied by one hundred because each one of these puts is representative of a of a put option contract that gives them the ability to buy or sell the contract uh, or execute upon it to gain these hundred shares. So as you can see, companies like Simplex, Sushkohana, Jane Street, Citadel, and Group One Trading are in the top five, as are many others. Okay, and these are just put option contracts, short short positions. This does not even include uh, other short positions. For example, uh, they they do something called wash sales, in which uh, Citadel was fined in 2017 for committing over half a million wash sales, and a wash sale. A wash sale is basically where a company sells its its own its own asset to itself and pretends as if it sold it to somebody else. 
and this in turn causes what is known in the stock market as short attacks and that's what causes the artificial movements uh, partly what causes the artificial movements of uh, these stocks uh, as well oh yeah it, it's 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 pretty insane here actually um, um don't you have any I don't know agency security agency for the stock market or Unfortunately, we do, and that's the Securities and Exchange Commission. And uh, up until recently, they've been pretty much quite quite useless. And then uh, aside from that, you've also got the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, and uh, they're even more useless because the guy that used to be the president, the, I'm sorry, the, the head, the chairman, his name was Heath Tarbert of the Commodities Futures and Trading Commission. He is now the uh, chief legal officer of Citadel Securities. Okay? Oh, well, Yeah, that see, that's this guy like, right here. Yeah, that's Heath Tarbert. Mostly. Yeah, baby. He's the uh, he was the 14th chairman and he now is the as of April 6, 2021, is the chief legal officer at Citadel Securities. And his, the guy that used to work under Heath, Rostin Beatham, is now the head of the CFTC. So these guys know each other very well. Excuse me one second. And so, yes, it is a conflict of interest. It's a massive conflict of interest, you know, and, and, it, mm. and overseas, the CFTC is in charge. What's up, honey? Hi, baby. Sorry, my little one's over here right now hanging out. But give me one second here. As you can see here, here's one of the many instances in which FINRA uh, has actually used, you know, wash sales. Uh, and look at the monetary fine. The monetary fine is $100,000. So in this instance, uh, Citadel consented to a fine, a censure and a fine of $100,000 and did not have to uh, admit fault. They basically pay the fine without admitting any guilt of any kind. See, it says right here, without admitting or denying the findings, the firm consented to the sanctions to the entry of the findings that it failed to enter and maintain continuous two-sided trading interest within the designated percentages. That means that they trade both sides. They bought it and sold it to themselves in order to get the stock price to come down on things like this. And they, this occurred over 502,000 times between 2014 and 2016 that we know about. I'm sorry, my mistake. Between August 2012 and May of 2014. And since then, it's just gotten more and more rampant. You know what I mean? I see. Yes. Yes. Um, and now, I guess uh, I didn't bring you here just to, to kind of... To, to tell you these things and kind of give you the bad news of what I believe to be the case and what, you know, millions of others have, have be believed to be the case as well. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to get your perspective on how you were invested, you know, either indirectly or directly through Citadel. And, um, and also to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up so that you don't have to take my word for it. You can go out and, and do your own due diligence. Of course, that's what I would recommend to anybody. Uh, but I, I feel it very important to tell people about what the situation that we're seeing on the stock markets, because I truly believe that these stocks have been, there have been so many synthetic shares created on these stocks uh, that it's going to equal what we call the mother of all short squeezes, uh, also known uh, lovingly as the MOAS by many people in the community, M-O-A-S-S. -S. And mm -hmm. it's not only these stocks, which is the problem, it's, the short interest on these stocks is hidden. And the way that they hide short interest is by taking out married puts. A married put is a put contract that is matched up with a call option. They're both uh, far out. And what it does is it takes a short interest from that uh, hedge fund and it hides it on the options chain as a failure to deliver, which will be seen in the future once that options contract either has to be executed, sold, or or yeah, executed or sold. So How far in the future, mm -hmm. you, when can you see it or when can we see that? They can almost do it uh, infinitely until they either run out of liquidity through a stock market crash or a loss of collateral asset value of these like Chinese bonds, for example. So until that happens, they can do it infinitely because the way that the market makers uh, can just and the hedge funds can allocate these. It's just like moving, get, taking out new futures options and rolling them, rolling new total return swaps 
and rolling new options and put options and married puts. And in addition, they can also, they do it also to exchange traded funds to ETFs, if you're familiar with that. But that's a vehicle in yeah. which uh, many groups of companies can be put into uh, one package. And if my computer decides to cooperate anytime soon, I will show you a little bit of these exchange traded funds. This is from uh, Kenna at the Bull House. Please make sure you guys are following the Bull House on YouTube and on Twitter. They are a group of individuals that does fantastic due diligence. And this is AMC. And these are exchange traded funds that hold AMC. There are more, but this is just the beginning of uh, where we started to collect data. And these are exchange traded funds that hold GameStop. Okay, so all of these funds that you see here on the right hand side of the screen. Let me move this over so it's a little bit more more clear since on that side it was kind of hindered. These are all exchange traded funds that hold GameStop. Excuse me one second. And these here currently are the exchange traded funds that we found that contain both GameStop and AMC. So we see them on the charts moving almost identically. And then every now and then uh, when needed, you know, they'll kind of move separately. But the reason being is because these exchange traded funds contain meme stocks such as this and other stocks that mm -hmm. hedge funds and market maker makers want to short and want to manipulate, whether it be up or down. So it's a, a massive conflict of interest. And uh, the, the short interest is not something that you can see on Ortex data to, to, for more than an extent. However, if you look on Ortex, uh, Ortex only has actual 85% of the data that's reported. And a lot of data, of course, is not reported, as well as is incorrectly reported or is being hidden on the options chain or through ISDA contracts, futures swaps, and total return swaps. Right. Um, okay. So this, uh, what you called married puts, also mm -hmm. are not included. No, absolutely not, because married puts uh, don't show up as short interest. They show up as options for 2023 or 2024, okay. whenever they decide to buy the put for. You know. Mm -hmm. See, so Can a married just, put is when someone, mm -hmm. when someone or a fund purchases an at the money put option on the same stock to protect against depreciation in the stock's price. And they do that very far out uh, on the chain as well to take short interest directly off their books. So it doesn't show up as short interest if you say log into Ortex and look it up, you know, which we could do as well. But I'm not even going to bother with that. There's, there's only 513 million shares of AMC and there's a reported short interest currently of around 85 million shares. But uh, we've previously done, uh, you know, share count estimates through things like say.com technologies before they were bought by Robinhood. And we've come to the conclusion that 1% uh, of apes uh, hold an, a, a massive average of, of shares even. So to the point of where if you use statistics and are conservative mm -hmm. in your estimates, we've come to the conclusion that a apes, I'm sorry, I should say AMC investors, retailers, whole own the float which is the total number of shares the 513 million shares between five to 15 times over uh, so that's two and a half billion to possibly 10 billion synthetic shares of a stock that only has 513 million share float and kind of the same situation for gamestop but they've even got a smaller float because they've got about 77 million shares of a float and uh, high short interest and we're going to see some crazy things here, man. And just like you saw in January and in, in June, we're thinking that we're on the precipice of the exact same thing mm. in these situations. Um, let me see if I can. Sorry, let me. I didn't mean to lead you astray. Do you mind if I ask you a little bit about. I don't want to get into too much detail, but is this the first that you're hearing about AMC or GameStop like situation? I'm just curious, you know, as to what the word is on the street over, you know, where you're from, for example. Yeah, um, I kind of heard of it, but I didn't know who exactly is 
shorting it or who was yeah sure i uh, understand that it's i didn't know that to know. and mm -hmm. just today actually i got uh, a message from uh, actually i don't know his name because there were just some uh, abbreviations in the in the link in linkedin from okay. him but he wrote mm -hmm. uh, an article oh, and yes, he sir. summarized this and uh, he explained it um yeah quite similar as you did and i read a lot about it today as i have mm -hmm. a free day today cool. it didn't work today so i read the whole day about it and today was the first day that i really got uh, in touch with this topic um well that's great man and and again please don't take our word for it you know go ahead and dig into it a little bit more on your own we just Absolutely. i just wanted to bring it up because it seemed like uh I personally feel that anybody that's on the wrong side of this trade is is possibly going to regret it. And I'm not yes. a financial advisor, sir. And, and I, this is not financial advice. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to as as a person, I kind of wanted to reach out and be like as an investor. Hey, man, just be careful. You know, maybe look into this a little bit more because if you have any money invested in Citadel, it, I don't know where what fund they have it in, but it could potentially be pretty dangerous. You know, so just wanted to put that out there, man yeah uh, and thanks uh thanks for it and yeah i i, don't, I wanted to ask how many people actually if you have some i don't know an amount of people who are like uh how to say long on this position um amc or game uh, gamestop well back in june uh amc did a share uh, and they began a share count and came to the and actually they did do they did a private share count and they came to the conclusion that there was 4.1 million AMC investors such as like myself and you know everyone else in here in this in this Discord chat right now so you know the majority if not all of these people here in this just in this small server you know and then we've got you know several hundred people watching on YouTube at this very moment uh that are are listening into our conversation that's why i told you not to get too too private you know i don't want to ask you too many private details uh so tr there's a huge huge number of people that are invested in it you know only uh, a small portion are actually on you know twitter or youtube or anything like that uh, but we we remain vocal because if we don't tell if we don't you know share our due diligence with each other you're not going to hear it from the mainstream media you know, in the same yeah. way that we've been, you know, kind of putting everything out there with, you know, Dr. Metzler's information. It's like we're putting everything together little by little and realizing that, hey, you know, these companies like, you know, BlackRock and Goldman and, and JP Morgan, for example, are extremely over leveraged. You know, they have four hundred and twenty six trillion dollars in derivatives, four hundred and twenty six trillion and that's not an underestimate. I've actually gone to the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency website and, and pulled that number. By, and, and yeah. It's, yeah. It's by what, but what, uh, sorry, by what mm -hmm. factor are they over leveraged uh, approximately? Well, in, you, is, are there some data? Yes, sir. Uh, bank liabilities. Because if they are so much over leveraged, then um, I think this is correlated with the uh, hedge funds at, as well. Absolutely. Because they loan the money, Absolutely. Right? Because uh, JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs are Citadel Securities' uh, top three uh, prime brokers. And there are others as well. Yeah. And then Citadel Securities has a hand in HSBC, who HSBC uh, owns a lot of Evergrande bonds, as well as other Chinese real estate bonds. Yeah. This is the wrong one here. This is the quarterly report on bank trading and derivatives. And as you can see here for American banks, the second quarter trading revenue was $2.4 billion, which is 22.9% less than the previous quarter. And previously they made 8.1 billion, but that was almost completely due to the artificial printing of money due to the American mm -hmm. stimulus package that was given to hedge funds and banks. Uh, we gave, we Americans, uh, gave $300 billion last year out of our taxpayer dollars to these banks without willing, unwillingly. For, you know, uh, the federal government did that 
on their own and taxed us for it. And these, so trading revenue in the second quarter of 2021 decreased by 41% almost compared to 13.6 reported in the second quarter of 2020, so just one year prior. And four of the largest banks held 88.7% of the total banking industry notional amount of derivatives out of 1,372 total banks. Okay, and again, like more proof that they're, that they're doing nefarious things. Centrally cleared means uh, on lit markets, not on dark pools. And as you know, in Germany and in everywhere else, except for the United States, basically, dark pools are illegal. And I'm sorry, and payment for order flow is illegal. So centrally cleared derivatives was only 39.5%. So almost 61.5% of all trades were committed on dark pools. Were, were transacted on dark pools in order to suppress price discovery. So I just wanted to, you know, a little bit, and, that, and we could honestly, we could talk about like from one section to the next and, and, and discuss it for just hours and hours and hours because I have in the past on many videos as well as other people, but I'm just saying like me personally, like I've dug into these things in great depth and you can, you can see some fantastic numbers here. This is the four banks domination and derivatives and that's $190 uh, trillion dollars right here. Uh, and then you got to add in everything from the shadow banking sector as well, which is all the way at the bottom, you know, as well. And, and there's actual firm numbers here for you. Now, keep in mind, these numbers that you're seeing are in millions of dollars. So you have to take this table because this number is representative millions. And you have to multiply these 53 million mm -hmm. by 1 million. So that's $53 trillion. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, $53 trillion here in liabilities. This is the top four banks. That's JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, and Bank of America. And then here's the top 25 commercial banks. You know, it equals $182 trillion. And then you've got to take the, sorry, one second. Let me keep going higher. They're holding companies. This is the top 25 holding companies in derivatives. And that's an additional $244 trillion in derivatives. But you see this right here? That's only $18 yes. trillion dollars in assets. So they got $244 trillion worth of derivatives in their shadow banking sector and $18 trillion worth of assets. It's garbage, right? Now let's look at the yeah, banks. This looks like, they got like 180... 13 times. Exactly. More. Go ahead, please. Yeah, it looks like uh, they have 13 times mm, yeah, more derivatives than assets. Look at the Goldman Sachs right here, brother. $47 trillion in derivatives, but they've only got $351 billion in measly assets. Mm. Isn't that insane? Isn't that, that's, that's more than 50x. That's like a 100x leverage, isn't it? $300 billion to $47 trillion uh -huh. in derivatives. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is why Janet Yellen is saying that there's going to be financial runs. This is why we had the January and AMC GameStop situation, an AMC situation. And unfortunately, I, I only see it getting worse, man, for, for those hedge funds. I, I only see it getting worse for those hedge funds uh, because their, their assets are losing value. Right now, currently, like this is Dr. Marco Metzler. He's formerly a Fitch rating. He works for Deutsche Market Group. Uh, he, we have done separate and now combined due diligence to come up to the realization that like Ashmore Group bought $100 million worth of bonds, but those holdings are worth $500 million in notional value. So through this, they get $500 million worth of bonds, current collateral asset value for $100 million. And until Evergrande defaults, they're going to be able to leverage that 5x or more with their prime broker to act as, the, uh, as basically around $2.5 billion worth of margin collateral. You know what I mean? He explains it yeah, better than I do here. This means that they bought this $500 million in nominal value basis for market value of $100 million and is now using the $500 million Asian nominal value bonds as fully accepted collateral to show capital for other hedges in the market like AMC Theaters and GameStop. You know. So it's kind of like the entire global banking system is linked and it's almost as if the Chinese Communist Party was very well aware of this and decided to let Evergrande as, long, as well as Cassia and Fantasia and uh, these 12 other Chinese developers default knowing that the American and international bondholders were going to take the uh, majority of the brunt here while they 
did as much as possible to develop their land and, and keep make money on the front end. So it's kind of an interesting situation. And uh, I'm sorry we're, we're stuck in it. Uh, but, you know, me personally and, and a lot of these people in here, it's, it's out of uh, due diligence and kind of understanding of the fact of what we're up against and seeing these things. And this is kind of what we're expecting now. Uh, I do have to go because I've got to pick up my kid in about four minutes from school. But this consistent yes. upwards pressure is kind of what we're expecting. Here we saw a run from you know basically three dollars to to twelve dollars or so in, in january for amc and then we went from eight dollars all the way up to seventy two dollars here i'm sorry eight i should have said uh you know around twenty to twelve dollars to seventy two dollars here in june and that's kind of what we're expecting to be next coming very shortly uh because of that you know aside from that there are many other factors, such as the Evergrande situation, the United States stock market situation, the global supply chain crisis, uh, the real estate crisis in China and in America and everywhere else in between now, treasury bonds being almost completely worthless. Uh, and, and so when you lose that collateral, we expect to see these kind of, you know, 500 to 14% rips. And eventually, enough of these hedge funds will completely default on these loans that they'll have no choice uh, but to close out their short positions. And that is going to equal massive losses for people that have money in these funds. And it's going to equal massive gains, a huge transfer of wealth from certain people to others. And that's kind of why we're just out here talking about it right now. You know? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Investment real quick, this is Jerome Powell. Oh, you might not be able to hear this, actually. My apologies for that. But just uh, this is just December 1st, I believe, December 1st or December 2nd. Jerome Powell was grilled in front of the US, United States House Financial Committee about BlackRock doing business with all these Chinese real estate development firms and how it's going to leave people with pensions and American 401ks. And because this is America, so that's what he was talking about. And just people globally. Uh, you know, flat broke when when they're what they thought was a solid investment goes goes bankrupt because, you know, BlackRock may be fine, but a lot of their investments and other investments underneath them that they're acting as a prime broker for tend to lose value. The prime broker will then have to come in and pay off those debts with the way that the stock market is set up. And that comes from funds, first and foremost, from people that are invested in the, that have funds invested in BlackRock and HSBC and JP Morgan, Goldman, Citibank, Wells Fargo, State Street. All these guys. So I personally changed banks to a much smaller bank that does not deal with ISDA contracts. Uh, so everyone's kind of doing their own <laughs> thing to try to hedge themselves for what we believe to be the a black swan event like we've never seen before. You know what I mean? So, Stefan, mm -hmm. I want to thank you again, buddy. If, if there's anything else that you might want to tell us or if there's any information you could give us, that'd be, that'd be you know, interesting to hear. Uh, I hope that I hope this isn't, like, bad news. I mean, I'm sure it's not great news for you. But, uh, you know, I, I hope you're able to do something to hedge yourself for what's coming as well. So I truly wish you the best, man. And, and I hope you stay in the Discord and... And hang out with us. You're more than welcome to be here. You're going to see that in other chat rooms like in AMC chat, Ape chat. Uh, there's people posting all sorts of different due diligence. And sometimes it's just fun nonsense party things. But, you know, these guys are actually in here doing actual real real due diligence on the stock market. You know, and, and as you can see here, that, that's what it's looking like today. That our stock market is bloody. And uh, the only reason AMC and GameStop are down today is because there has been no margin call defaults mm -hmm. yet to cause them screaming. And I, I believe that could be at, at any moment, you know? So that being said, I want to thank everybody for being here. I've got to get off the stream because I do have to get out of here. So thank you everybody. Appreciate you. Uh, Stefan, let's catch up again in a little bit. All right. Yeah. Thank Thanks a lot guys. All of you. Thank you Thanks. very much.